look at the community that I live in. It's a little bit different from your average house and some of the things may look real strange to you, but I think you'll enjoy just seeing a different living environment. One thing we try to focus on out here is a self-sufficient community. So what we'll be looking at, number one, we'll be looking at all the different houses and the type of construction. Number two, we'll be looking at the different types of energy. <laughs> and number three, we'll take a look at the garden. So if y'all ready to go, and if my baby will quit pulling my hair, we'll go ahead and... The first house we're looking at was built by a couple. It's a two-bedroom house. We're looking out at the outside facing the greenhouse. On the very top of the house, you can see several different things. Of course, you've got an air conditioner unit, a TV antenna, but let me show you something that supplies a lot of their electricity. What you're looking at right now are solar panels. The solar panels are connected to a battery source and they charge the batteries. They're able to do their laundry, run their lights, stereo, TVs, VCRs, or whatever they want to run using the power of the sun. What you're looking at is the greenhouse. It's covered with honeysuckle, and we'll go inside the greenhouse just a minute, and you can see what plants that they do grow here. You can see how the house is about six to eight feet below grade level, which is the level of the ground and then it has about two to three feet of earth on top of it which provides a lot of insulation. We'll go on inside so you can see what it's like to be inside an underground house. Enjoy taking a look at my dogs. There's Twinkle, Boo, Yogi, and where did Odie go? Keep going. Keep going. Down. This my car. To the right. To the right. That's the left. Oh, no. Never mind. There she is. Okay, she's with the other dogs now. There she Aww, is. Ah, there's my other dog. That's a Here we are inside the underground house. You can see that a lot of the furniture is built in. What we're looking at is a built-in sofa that goes in a circle. This room is round because these type of houses can be built in any shape that you want them. They can be completely free form. Have an aquarium back there in that little cubby <coughs> hole. Okay, lots of the floors in these houses are tile floors. There's their cat. Because tile is very good to have with the concrete and plus it makes for easy cleaning. Okay, I want to show you something that was kind of interesting in this house. It's a skylight. Okay, so right above our heads, up on the ceiling, there is dirt, and this is a skylight that goes through the dirt that allows the house to get plenty of light. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you the kitchen area. I don't know if you can tell the stained glass windows in those cabinets. Your teacher made those. Okay, move on around to the dining room windows and all of these stained glass windows. I also made. These windows happen to look out into the greenhouse. Curious. Here we are in Alan and Ginger's house, and we've just kind of interrupted them. They're preparing for a party. But I wanted to show you their house, because their house is really one of the most beautiful houses out here. They had put tons and tons of work to build this. All the cabinets, the walls, and lots of the furniture Alan and Ginger did make. This is their kitchen area. Well, look at the kitchen windows. All of these were also handmade by Alan. They were not bought at a store. He just started with raw wood and made all of these windows. Very nice area. Okay, they believe that a house should be very open and airy. So you can see from standing in one spot, I can see almost all of their house. This is their fireplace area. 
Notice the rock on the floor. All the rock was hand laid. There's her fireplace. Ginger is an artist, and Alan is an artist. You can see their front door. Shot of their living area. You can see where the windows are that is really looking out into their greenhouse, and in just a minute we'll go look out there. Notice because they use ferro cement, they could shape their house in whatever shape they want. They chose to make their living area curved and round. Now we're going back into the kitchen. There's Ginger getting ready for a party. I'm trying to decide which dishes to put in which dishes. This table was also made by Alan. He's such a skilled worker in wood, and I know a lot of y'all would be interested in learning how to do woodwork. This is a stained glass window that Ginger made. Right now we're in the bathroom. In just a minute you'll recognize this place. There's a toilet. Okay, all the cabinets again were handmade by Alan and Ginger. I don't know, this may just turn out to be a dark blob, but Ginger hand painted her shower. It's a very cool scene. She did it on a very hot summer day. I don't know if y'all can really tell what that is. It's a cool mountain scene. That's, that's her shower, inside her shower. This is Ginger's art easel, and artists needs a lot of tools, and I'm showing you this also because right next to it is the desk that Alan built. He built that himself. Right now we're in Ginger's greenhouse, and she's an avid insect collector and plant grower. Show her her butterfly collection right there. It's very extensive. Okay, we'll go on around the greenhouse. Maybe you'd like it better if I focus this there. You can see she has many plants. Ginger likes her greenhouse. It's a very enjoyable place to work, and she frequently does bead work and artwork out here. Okay, you may be wondering what that tub is over in the corner. This is a hand washing machine. What you do is you just grab that crank and you pull it back and forth to wash your clothes. I'll crank right there. Ah, Ginger's going to demonstrate. Okay, you put the clothes in. This is great, Ginger. Turn on the water. This is the way Ginger does all her laundry. Okay, it's the old wringer type, so afterwards you put whatever you just washed through the wringer. Bring it out. She has her clothes lines outside. Okay, who needs any electricity? <laughs> However, Alan and Ginger do have an extensive electrical source and it's all solar. They do have a generator backup because they do do a lot of things that involves power like ginger stained glass and Alan's woodwork. Here's some more plants. We can just turn all the way around and peek back inside the house. Right there is the house. There's her front door, which is also handmade. This is the outside of Alan and Ginger's house. You can see the stone path that leads down, leads down to their house. Kind of move so you can see. See that the earth is on the top of the house. This is their front entrance. Whenever you build with solar energy, you want to try to use a lot of different shading devices. One device they have that they plan to use is this plant system to grow the plants so that it will create shade for their house. Let's get a close-up of that. Okay, their plants are growing up a trellis and this will provide shade for this porch area and in turn shade the whole house. This is the outside of Alan and Ginger's greenhouse that we were just in a while ago where Ginger showed you how to use the washing machine. In the winter, the greenhouse is used to collect sun and provide additional heat for the house. They do use wood heat in the winter. They have some gas heat and then the heat from this area of the greenhouse. 
This is another view of Alan and Ginger's house. You can see from this angle all the dirt up on the roof. This is their patio. You can see their solar panels up on top. This is the source of their power. This is all that they use to power their whole house. Right there. Okay, here's their la little ladder that they have to get on top of the roof. They can climb right up there, get on the roof. And another shot of their greenhouse. The ground that you see is originally 10 feet below the normal grade level. The earth that you see on top was the original grade of the land. Since we've already seen two houses, I thought I'd go ahead and show you the outside of another house and their garden. This is one of the best gardens out here where we live. Bill and Jude are avid gardeners. They have all sorts of things growing here. They have corn and green beans and peas and tomatoes and onions and just you name it and it grows here. In the background you can see the top part of our house which isn't quite finished. See if we can get a close-up on some of these garden plants. Okay, everything looks very lush and green. We just had that flooding rain just the other day. This is Bill and Jude's house nestled in this grove of mesquite trees. We're looking at their greenhouse kitchen. That's the windows that you see. Their sitting area. There's a little part of the house that isn't finished. Everybody out here has built their own houses and you can imagine if you tried to build the house that you live in how it would take a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of work. They're just about finished with their house but everybody still has a few things to do. Okay, what you see there is a handmade made oven, which I'll let Bill tell you about it just a minute. This is a bread oven. We cook bread and pizza, pies in the oven, and uh, it works on the principle that the fire is underneath the oven, and the heat heats the oven chamber and the smoke goes up the top. It's a very old principle. Are these like the ovens that Indians used to use? It's the same principle. The wind draws the fire to keep the fire flaming and heat and it pulls the fire through the oven and the exhaust Here's another shot of Bill and Jude's garden, and I want you to see these yuccas with the pink flowers. Those are those tall, stocky-looking flowers that are so pretty. Bill says a lot of hummingbirds. Okay, oh, the baby's getting tired, so we're going to have to stop in a minute. But this is my house. I've told you that my house is not finished yet, but I do live in one part of it that is finished. If you can see the kind of square-looking part, at the back of the round part of the house. That's the part that I currently live in, right back here. Okay, um, That does have dirt on the back wall. The wall we're seeing does not have dirt. The very top of the house that has those slats and vents, that's a solar chimney. And that part of the house is used to help vent off any heat that would collect in the house. Okay, we'll go back and look at the dome a little bit. Okay, this is a dome that I'm currently working on, mainly that Ray is working on, and the little bubble you see is really just a closet. It's a very large closet. The large part of the dome is the part that will house the rest of our house. We'll have the living room and two bedrooms, a kitchen. The bathroom is in the square part of the house. We'll walk around so you can see the front part of this. Okay, here's the front part of my house. You can see it's very much under construction. You can see all the scaffolds. Notice it's got a real interesting still pattern on the roof. We've got all of the side walls done and you can tell that the roof has not yet been cemented. That's the part you're looking at at the top of the screen. 
Uh, what we may do is cut this out to make several skylights. This archway right there, and you can see all the baby's laundry hanging out inside the house. This archway is where the front door and front windows will be. The window to the left of that is where the dining room will be. That part, that little bubble, will have at least three windows. Okay, I think you can get a picture of our solar panels up on the roof. Okay, these are the solar panels. This is the only source of electricity we use, except for the generator, which we use to run power tools. You can see behind the solar panels is a series of windows. These windows are used to collect sunlight in the winter, which will be absorbed into the, the back wall, which is a concrete wall. Here's my front door windows. There's the cat bowl area. He walks up a little ramp to eat his food. Maybe I can see that better focus. It's kind of a Spanish style looking house. What I'm looking at right now is a solar hot water heater. It has reflective aluminum on the inside that reflects to a big black tank. Uh, we no longer use this right now. Right now we're using propane, but for about two years we used this and it provided all the hot water we needed. Uh, we will rehook it when we get a little more of our house done. My garden, you can see the garden gate is open. Uh, the flowers, the bright yellow flowers you see are Coreopsis. They're a wildflower, although I did have to plant those out here. We have lots of native wildflowers out here, Indian paintbrush and Indian blanket. We'll get a close-up of these flowers. If I gave you a real close-up of my garden, you could probably tell that I, I do need to pull some weeds. Here's my cat. Her name is Kit. She's a great mouser and killer. She loves to kill everything she sees. What I wanted to show you back here in the garden is the raised beds. Okay, we use raised bed gardening, but you can plant many more plants in there than you could if you just planted flat into the earth. Here's a good shot of the dogs. This is my favorite dog right there. That's Boo, Yogi. There's the cat again. Uh-oh, they're standing on top of me.